we are gathered today to share each other's grief in separation from these extraordinary devotees and to share our remembrances of them. Murli Mohan Prabhu and Rakesh I believe also called Gagan they were really brothers in a spiritual sense they so much shared their love for Krishna with each other and with all of us the nine processes of devotional service it is said that one can attain the perfection of prem or love of God by sincerely practicing any one of them early Mohan Prabhu really taught the world how Krishna is in the beautiful form of the deity sometimes we have a tendency to believe intellectually that Krishna is non different than the deity but we really don't have that much realization that he's not so much more than a symbolic representative of Krishna in stone but when we see someone absorbed in loving Krishna in serving Krishna in sacrificing his life for Krishna in that form their association is what gives us real faith and realization Murli Mohan Prabhu he was so absorbed in worshipping his Radha Madan Mohan as far as I could see whatever he looked at in the world he was seeing it in relation to Sri Radha Madan Mohan Radha Gopinath, Radha Ras Bihari. If he would see flowers, he would be thinking of how they can be decorating. If he would see fruits, whatever he would see, he would think of a relationship with the deity. And the first time his association really came to my notice it was years ago we had our Janmashtami celebration at Radha Gopinath temple and all of these devotees were going to this little flat to celebrate Janmashtami Bandra. in Bandra they would go there and come back and I was wondering, this must be something extraordinary. There's this incredible, beautiful, wonderful temple of Radharas Bihari and Juhu. And there's thousands and thousands of people coming to this temple in Chopati Radha Gopinath. And people were leaving these temples to go to a tiny little flat in Bandra. And there are so many deities around Bombay, actually. <laughs> but what made Madan Mohan flat so special? It was the absorption of Murli Mohan Prabhu and his brother Rakesh in how they served. 
as Gopal Krishna Maharaj told us, they would put, the two of them would put the same amount of energy and enthusiasm to make decorations that entire pujari staffs at major temples hardly could do. And everything was done with so much devotion. And there was a whole group of people who were so inspired that, that, that he was their Ishtadev. <laughs> Simple people, very, very prominent industrialists. Their hearts were so moved, transformed to see this devotion. They would come to this little flat to have their darshan. And Murli Mohan Prabhu, he would also, he would see the devotees as his deities. Anyone who would go to his temple, how he would serve, how he would appreciate, how he would love everyone. It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, one who sees the deity in the temple but doesn't offer honor and respect to the devotees is Kanishta Adhikari. He was not only so deeply absorbed in serving Radha, Madan, Mohan, Radha, Ras Bihari, Radha, Gopinath, all of these wonderful deities. But with the same spirit, he, was, he loved to honor, respect, and serve devotees. And that is why so many people were deeply inspired and loved him. And so many people, their faith and realization in the grace of the Lord who appears in the deity was so much inspired. And I must say I'm one of those devotees. From 1970, three, four, until 1979, my full-time service was as a pujari on a little mountain. It was kind of like the flat in Bandra, except it was always covered with snow. It's kind of like between Bandra and Muktinath, <laughs> New Vrindavan on the mountain in a dilapidated old house. I was given the service of being Pujari. And the consciousness of a Pujari is very special. Where our heart, our soul, everything is revolving around our deity. So, due to that experience I had, I very, very deeply appreciated the authenticity, the genuineness, the love that Marley Mohan Prabhu had. And his brother was right there with him, always. When he came to Radha Gopinath Temple, His enthusiasm was like a blazing fire. There was just so much he wanted to do. He would stand in the back of the temple through Mangalarti, sometimes for hours. And while we look at Radha Gopinath or Radha Ras Bihari, you know, I don't know what goes through your minds or my minds or what prayers we have, but he would just be looking and 
offering prayers for the Lord to reveal the outfit he should make for them. And he was empowered with, with intricate artistic abilities to make extraordinary outfits that charmed the hearts of every devotee that saw it. We had some professionals and some devotees designing the clothes, the garments for Radha Gopinath. But when Murli Mohan made his first one for us and offered for Radha Gopinath, it was like an explosion of joy in the hearts of all devotees. We had just never seen anything like that. And, and then he started making and started a whole deity dress department along with Gaur Krishna on the roof. We just made a little shack on the roof of the temple. And he was there guiding, inspiring on festivals. He would spend days and days and days dreaming, praying, organizing, getting incredible flower decorations, every type of decoration. He was totally absorbed, spontaneously absorbed. And he never wanted any payment for anything he did. He just did it out of love, selfless love. And that absorption is the perfection of Krishna consciousness, to be absorbed in pleasing Krishna, to be absorbed in serving Krishna, to be absorbed in giving happiness to devotees. Such absorption is very rare. And Murli Mohan Prabhu personified that for all of us. There's so much that could be said. He was a special devotee whose sweetness, his humility, his enthusiasm, deeply charmed and transformed the hearts of anyone who came closely in his association. And he designed this pilgrimage to the Himalayas and brought several of the people who he really inspired closest to go. All I could say is, when they departed on their pilgrimage, perhaps they didn't understand what kind of pilgrimage they were actually taking. Muktinath is the Lord who gives liberation. Krishna sees, Krishna sees everything we do. Krishna sees our love, our devotion. Kaunte aprati jani hi name bhakta pranashati. Surdas Prabhu and our beloved Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj have explained so beautifully the philosophy and how we see the departure of great devotees. Bhishma Dev, he explains in Srimad Bhagavatam that even the greatest philosophers, rishis, and sages cannot understand the inconceivable ways that things go in this material world. Why the Pandavas had to suffer so much. So trying to understand exactly why 
this happened is not really very important. Material existence, there are uncertainties for everyone at every moment. But one thing we can know for sure, 100%, is that Krishna's love for his devotees is the highest truth, and it is infallible. And Krishna will be there for his devotee at the time of the greatest need. And Krishna was with them, their immortal souls, to lift them toward the ultimate goal, back home, back to Godhead. And while we are weeping and in separation from them, we should feel the honor and the joy that every tear that drops from our eyes, from our hearts, is an offering of our love and gratitude to these great souls. And that is beautiful. But deep in our heart, there should be a joy. Because death could come to anyone at any moment, and it will come to all of us. But that they had such absorption, love, inspiration for serving Krishna and the devotees. What beautiful life. What a great success. They're with Krishna. Thank you very much.